Well, praise the Lord, somebody that knows the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that powerful spirit, that resurrection spirit is in you. I want you just to go ahead and shout amen if you're ready for day six. You see, we're living in miracle power, living because it's the spirit of the Lord that is working in us, through us, through Brother Cirillo to release this impartation. If you are ready, for God to take you where you have never been before. I want you to join Don and Mark and I as we stand here in the shadow of the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center, giving honor to whom honor is due. Come on, let's welcome to the day six Morris Cirillo Miracle Power Living School of Ministry, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. The fourth chapter of Luke. He returns from his experience with Satan, being tempted and being tried. And the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And he began to teach in the synagogue. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered to him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And he opened the book and he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are Bruise. Jesus performed tremendous miracles in so much that in Luke 32, in Luke 4:32, it is written, they were astonished at his doctrine for his Word was with power. God gives to us to perform His work. God gave to Moses power and authority to perform signs and wonders in his name. 35th verse. Or let's go back to the 35th. Third verse. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed. Now the 36th verse. And they were all 
amazed and spoke amongst themselves, saying, What a word is this! For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. With what authority and power God sent Moses into Pharaoh's court with power and authority to fulfill the commission. God sent Jesus with power and authority to fulfill the commission. God sends you and I with no less power and no less authority to fulfill the commission. That word power is taken from the Greek word which means deutimus, which literally means the miracle working power of God. That word authority is taken from the Greek word which means exousia. What that word means is this in the Greek, exousia, the right to exercise. What these religious leaders were saying was this, what a word is this, for with authority and power, for with the right to exercise, the miracle working power of God, he commands. I don't think you heard what I said. What they were saying of Jesus was this, with the right to exercise the miracle working power of God, he says to the devil, come out. With the authority and with the power, with the dunamis and with the exousia, he says to the blind, see. With the dunamis and with the exousia, he says to the winds and the waves, be still. With the dunamis and with the exousia, he says to the dead, come forth. <laughs> with what, Brother Shrilla? With the right. With the right. With the right to exercise it. It's my right. I don't stand here in my name. I stand here in the name of my Father who sent me. He tells me what to say, what to do. <laughs> Moses, you're going into Pharaoh's court and you're going in my name, and you got the rod, the symbol of power, the symbol of authority. Now, fulfill the commission. 
set my people free. God uses signs. He uses wonders. He uses miracles to teach. What is he wanting to teach us? He's wanting to teach us to depend upon him. He doesn't want us to trust in the arm of flesh, irregardless of what it is. He wants a people who will put their 100% trust in him. Do you remember In these 10 reasons that Brother Srila gave us, that God gave to us of why God works through signs and wonders, one was to instill fear. Deuteronomy 4, 34 through 36. Let me read this to you. God entered into a covenant with the people of Israel. Now I tell you in the name of Jesus that through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God has given to you and I a covenant relationship now. It doesn't do away with the old covenant, it just builds on that and establishes in us a stronger tie, a stronger relationship, a more powerful relationship than Moses or Abraham or Isaac or Jacob ever had with God because now through Jesus Christ, we have something they could never claim. We are one. Put your hand up and say, I am one. With the God of signs and wonders and miracles. Let me read Deuteronomy 4, 34 and 36. Moses speaks to the children of Israel as they're preparing to go into the promised land. He says, has God ever tried to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation by trials, by silence, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors? This is the big question. Has God ever tried to do this? Moses says to the children of Israel as they're ready to go into the promised land, as the Lord 
your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. To you, it was shown that you might realize and have personal knowledge. Somebody say, God uses signs and wonders to teach. Say it again. Say it again. To you, it was shown that you might realize and have personal knowledge that the Lord is God that there is no other beside him. Out of the heaven, he made you hear his voice, that he might correct, that he might discipline, that he might admonish. Somebody say, God uses signs and wonders to teach us to depend. made you to see his great fire. You heard his words out of the midst of the fire. God's purpose in manifesting these signs and wonders was to teach. Remember what we say? Signs and wonders will provide the evidence. God purposely hardened Pharaoh's heart. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. He shall follow after them. I will be honored upon Pharaoh. I will be honored upon all his hosts. The Egyptians also will know that I am the Lord. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. The heart of Pharaoh and of his servant was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. See, they were happy to let them go. After God hardened their heart, they said, we made a mistake. See, they were carrying out of Egypt treasures that were absolutely astonishing, silver, gold. Why have we let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and he took his people 600 chosen chariots, all the chariots of Egypt, captains, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand, and the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, his army, they overtook the Israelites encamping by the sea. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. Behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they became sore afraid. What happened was they got their eyes on their circumstance. You ever see this plaque? 
These were words that God gave to Brother Shrew. When facing one of the biggest challenges of building out an army and reaching this world for God in a hotel room in Washington, D.C., the Spirit of God came upon me. God said, get your pen out, Morris, and write. I got my pen out and I started to write. God said to me, don't look to the bigness of your need. Look to the bigness of your God. Your circumstances are hindrances to seeing my abilities. If you keep your eyes on your circumstance, the devil will use your circumstance to defeat you and to accuse the Word of God, the written and the living Word. Your victory is in keeping your eyes on the bigness of your God and His ability. He has promised to take you step by step by step, not all at once. And each step will be a miracle. got their eyes on the Egyptians. Look at them. We can see them. You know the first thing the enemy wants to do when your circumstances get difficult? He wants you to use your circumstance to accuse God. But you put this down in your little book, the book of your mind and the book of your heart. The devil's a liar. And I tell you in the name that's above every name that God wants to use your circumstances to manifest himself to you. children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Look, we're going to be killed. How easy it is to forget. How easy it is. You took us out of Egypt. Is not this the word that we told you in Egypt. See, it's not easy, people. It's not easy. We're talking about coming into miracle power living. It's not easy. It's not easy to see past the natural and to get a breakthrough, to see into the supernatural. It's not easy. It's not easy. See, what do you see when you look at your circumstance? What do you see? They surely didn't see anything but death that they were going to be killed, that they were going to be slaughtered. The armies of the Egyptians were here and they were going to annihilate them. There was no hope. They forgot the promise of God. They were looking at their natural. 
natural circumstances. What are you doing? Are you forgetting the promises? Are you looking at your natural circumstances? Moses said unto the people, fear not. The manifestation of true faith is present when the absence of fear takes place. Moses saw the Egyptians as well as they did. What did he know? He knew that those Egyptians were there by divine appointment. He knew those Egyptians weren't there because they wanted to be there. They were there because God hardened their heart and drew them there for another manifestation of his power. Moses said, stand still. <laughs> Don't have a nervous breakdown. Look the enemy in the face. Don't be afraid. Stand still. And when you do, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. He will show to you today. Oh, glory to God. Say, today is the day of salvation. Today, the Egyptians whom you have seen, you will see them again no more. <laughs> get ready. When I get rid of the enemy, brother, you're never going to see them again. unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Don't talk to me about what I've already told you. There's something about God. He doesn't like vain repetition. Heathen are vain babblers. God is not a vain babbler. He speaks and it's done. He speaks and he wants you to believe it. He doesn't want you to go over it and 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 over it. I like another translation from the Living Bible. You know what it says? You know what God said to Moses, how the Living Bible translates this 15th verse? God said to Moses, quit praying and get the people moving. your credentials.
stretch your hand out over the sea and divide it. The children of Israel are going to go on dry ground through the midst of the sea, but I'm going to harden the hearts of those Egyptians. Watch what's going to happen. They're going to think that they can do what you do. 17th verse, I will get me honor, oh glory, upon Pharaoh and all of his hosts, upon his chariots and his horsemen, and the Egyptians shall know what? That I am the Lord God. Somebody say to teach. to teach. God uses, God uses signs, signs wonders, wonders, miracles, miracles to, teach to teach us. How to depend on Him. angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. <laughs> and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. And it gave light by night so that one came not near the other all night. It blinded the Egyptians and at the same time gave light to the Israelites. Somebody say teach. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, made the sea dry land. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. We don't have time to talk about it because we're getting to another important point. One of the greatest miracles of the opening of the Red Sea was the drying up of the land so that they could walk upon the bottom of that sea. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right and on their left, and the Egyptians pursued went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud. Where did the Lord look from? From the heavens? Where? From the pillar of fire and of the cloud. God said, Moses, when you go, he said, I'm going to be with you. He was there. He 
He said, I promise I'll never leave you. I promise I'll never forsake you. He is here. He is with us. Doesn't make any difference what our circumstances are. He is right here. And they took off their chariot wheels. The Egyptians did as they were in the midst of the walls of the Red Sea. And they drave them, drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled against it. The Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned, covered the chariots, covered the horsemen, covered the host of Pharaoh. And there wasn't so much as one of these Egyptians left. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did, and the people And the result, they believe the Lord and his servant Moses. Somebody say, teach. teach. Somebody say, teach. teach. Somebody say, teach. teach. Somebody say, teach. Teach. God manifests signs and wonders to teach us how to depend upon him for his supernatural provisions in our lives. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. What did they learn? They learned the leading of God. They had a new relationship. They learned that there was the ability to be led divinely by God. God led them by the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. They learned that he was a God of protection. The cloud became a covering because it stayed with them for 40 years. It never left them. The fire never left them. The cloud never. 
never left them for 40 years. When it went, they went. When it stopped, they stopped. It covered them. It protected them from the elements. It protected them from the heat. God taught them. He was a God of protection. God sustained them. He nursed them. He fed them. He kept the clothes on their body. Now I'm telling you that the time has come again in these end times where God will once again be the supernatural provider for his end time people. I am expecting God's supernatural provision for you. Well, if you are blessed, I want you to shout, I am blessed. Somebody that believes that the God of Moses, the God of Mars Cirillo is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that God is with you and you are one with the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. I want you to shout amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, and you said you twice. And just as there was Lazarus and the Lazarus miracle and blind Bartimaeus and his miracle, there's your miracle Come on. as well. And God foresaw that the children of Israel would have skepticism. That's why Moses was given those three signs. And you may encounter skepticism around you. Some may come to you and say, you know, I'm not into miracles. I want really deep teaching. Well, he shows us that the miracles and the miraculous in that realm is a great teaching realm. Other people say, no, I don't want to get sidetracked into the super, into miracles. I want to pursue holiness. But the awe that we feel from this presence and these possibilities and the realm of faith inspires holiness in us. In fact, it really checks us in a great way. And then if there's more skepticism, he gave us a plaque which I know Greg periodically offers the yes. people, look not to the bigness of your need, look to the bigness of your God, your circumstances are hindrances to seeing my ability. The written word is emphasized, but also the living word and that that your miracle, I don't know what your name is, if you're Mama Doku in Ghana, whoever you are, your miracle is a step-by-step -step proposition walking it through with God. Amen, and we have received a great commission. When Jesus said, not only I pray for them, but I pray for those who will believe through them, them. and it That's includes yes. you and me. And Amen. Jesus said, yes. the same way you sent me, yes. I have sent them. Yes. Amen. And not only Jesus has sent us, but he says, and the glory you have given me the miracle working power. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You, I have given them. Yes. So I had in my heart while we were watching the teaching that some of you, you might wonder, when will it be my time? I want to tell you, this is your time because you have been baptized with the same baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus went through. This is your time now. Amen. Come on, somebody say, now is my time. I tell you, Brother Cirillo is by the Spirit of God equipping us. You see, your village, your city, your nation, your world, even your family, they're looking for something more than words. They are looking for a God that answers by fire. They are looking for a God of power. And we know that the power of God is the greatest gift that we can have released in our life. It's the legacy of Morris Cirillo. It's what built this legacy center. It is what built this school of ministry. And because you are connecting, you are like an Elisha. 
that is taking the mantle of God from the life of Elisha, from the life of Morris Thrill. I want to encourage you, tomorrow is going to be a very special anointing and impartation service. I believe that there is going to be a mantle of power, that there is going to be a mantle of the miracle working power of God. You see, God doesn't give us his gifts for our own edification, but God wants to use your life. And there are people that are depending upon the gift of God in your life, just like Jonah was called to a people and he ran. God said, I'm not letting you run away. I want you to know he hasn't changed his mind. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. And God is going to use your life in a greater way than he's ever used it before. God doesn't want to have a conversation with you about your past. He is ready to have a conversation with you about a miracle, power, living future. So Father, we thank you today for every viewer. We thank you for every listener on the podcast today, every YouTube, every Facebook viewer, however somebody is seeing this right now. God, I sense an anointing, a mighty anointing, God, on this campus right now. Lord, that is sweeping over Nigeria, over Kenya, over the United States, Europe, Lord, Central America, South America, the Middle East. I declare where you are right now, the God of Moses is meeting you in a burning bush. The God of Morris Cirillo is meeting you in your hiding place. And he's saying, now is your time. And God is coming to say, you are not what the devil says you are, but you are what I say you are. And now is your time, like Mark said, to step into your end time destiny. So Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. My God, I tell you what, somebody that's in there feeling the power of God in your hands right now, you can go ahead and just take that hand, put it wherever your sickness is in your body, put it on your mind. If you're having a battle in your mind, if you're having a battle with depression, if you're having a battle with fear, if you're having a battle with insomnia, I want you to know right now there is a power that God wants to not just release through your life to somebody else, but God is releasing it right now through your life for yourself. God is going to infuse you. God is going to heal you. And then he's going to use you as an instrument of his healing power. Whatever you do, do not miss the anointing service, the impartation service tomorrow. And then the next day, we're going to have an incredible round table review. I love them. Make sure that you're getting your questions in. We had some tremendous questions in Revelation Faith, and we want your questions on miracle, power, living. We'll answer as many of them as we can. Also want to mention to you, Don mentioned the incredible plaque. God said, this is our free gift from David and Teresa from the team. All you need to do is make sure you're on the email list and you're going to be getting this in your email. If you're not, just send a little note to the Dean, Phyllis Freeman, P. Freeman at mcwe.com and she will make sure to add you. You'll get all the study notes, all the special gifts. And then of course the download, the free download. Thousands of you have downloaded this. If you haven't done it, please do it today. The miracle book, the five most important truths from the word of God that Brother Cirillo received in revelation from God that caused him to live in a rhythm of miracles, signs, and wonders. Well, on behalf of our Beautiful First Lady, our President David Cirillo, on behalf of Don, Mark, our team here. This is Greg Morrow saying we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Remember this, you are a part of God's end time plan. You are a very important person. You are a VIP and God has not planned any. I don't mean not some or a few. He has not planned any defeats for you. If you believe it, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow live from Legacy in Jesus' name.